chat we are doubling down with my clear text today so uh, as well as Elaine quietly transcribing everything we say in the corner we're really delighted to have Orla Pearson with us as well Orla thank you for joining us today um, it's been a pleasure to have you working with us the last couple of years um, yes and Deborah's mm -hmm. typing we love Elaine you can't type as quick as Elaine or Orla uh, for that matter. Um, so you know, we're going to talk about captions, but we're also going to talk about just general um, accessibility for deaf and hard of hearing and, and those kind of topics. So we've used my clear text for events and, and we know you're all over the place. You're doing stuff uh, for, for theatres and live events and post live events and companies and everything else. How did you get started in this business? Because it's not something that you normally just decide, wake up one morning and go, oh, I don't know what, I'm going to start doing transcription. For a start, you've got to have super fast fingers, right? Or you a do. quick brain. I think it's a quick brain. People always say to me, your fingers must ache. But actually, it's my brain. At the end of every event, it's like hard to think. And it's always that moment people go up and say, how do you do that? <laughs> so you, you kind of learn to just get it out there. No, I started um, many, many years ago. This is the only career I've been in. Um, I was doing a course in a college in Dublin and they came into the class and they said, the space is in the stenography course and there's jobs in London guaranteed at the end of it. And that was a time when there was very, very low employment in Ireland and everybody had to leave. So I went to the class, thought I'll have a go. I didn't even know what it was. I knew there was a keyboard somewhere, but I just ended up being really good at it. It was just came very naturally to me. It made sense. I was quick, quick at it, and I just progressed really quickly and finished pretty much at the top of the class. So um, I went straight to London, got my job, worked in the courts for two years, and decided I absolutely hated it. So it wasn't for me. And um, the BBC had come to visit when we were in college, and I thought to myself, that's where I want to work. So I phoned them up and I said, um, I, and I was going to go home. I was going to go back to college. I was going to do something else. And I phoned them up. This was my, if I get in the BBC, I'll keep going. And um, they said, oh, how wonderful. We're just looking for people. There's an ad coming out tomorrow in The Guardian. So I applied. I wasn't that experienced. I wasn't probably as good as a lot of writers, but they gave me a job straight away. And um, that's where I met Elaine, believe it or not. Two weeks into the job, Elaine arrived, so they took in about eight people at the time, and we just started working there. We went to America. They retrained us. We, we have had the best training of anybody possible, and um, they were going from 5% of their live output to 20%, and then it was going to grow. So we stayed with them right till it was up to 100% of live content. And when we started, they barely let us write anything for fear of making a mistake. But by the end of it, we were doing 24-hour news, rolling hours of news. And Elaine and I were both assistant producers there, so we managed the team. We, you know, did the first sports broadcast. I wrote the guidelines for that. People still use those guidelines. We did the first longest. We're in the Guinness Book of Records, the longest ever captioned broadcast, which was um, Lady Diana's funeral which was 17 hours, but then that broke when 9-11 happened and we did 24 hours and then we did 24 hours and then it just, you know, as soon as you break something, you just keep going. So yeah, we, um, I was there for 15 years and um, they started to bring in technology and it just wasn't quite, we could see, I could see which way it was going. They just, it wasn't the same standards. They were, someone had decided it was going to save them a lot of money. It didn't turn out that way. The standards dropped and they offered a round, we got sold off, so they offered a round of redundancies, and I said, yes, please, and so did Elaine, so we jumped. So, and then, I, sorry, I know, I do talk a lot, Neil, you know that, you'll have to interrupt That's okay, me. no, I, that, that's fine, and and I think and Deborah will want to come in in a moment, but this is, so, so uh, we, this is the, the point where they were moving from transcriptionists to re-speaking. So, yes. so for those that don't know, re-speaking is essentially using speech recognition technology. So someone listens to what's being said and then, then repeats that re to speech. Yeah, yeah re-speaks that to the speech recognition software, which is how you end up getting some of these interesting things appearing on your screen during live 
live uh, live programming. Of course, yeah. if it's if it's post live and you know it's recorded TV, the sub the subtitles are, are really accurate and, and very very good. It's it's the live ones that um, that, that's that that's give the us. Hard bit. Yeah, the, yeah, the, that's the that's the tricky bit, and that's why what you guys are so good at. So, um, and it so, is interesting with yeah. respeaking because um, I think subtitles were better ten years ago on television, sadly. But um, and it is the introduction of technology that has made them drop in standard, and and it's the best you're going to get at the moment out of voice recognition because they work in soundproof rooms with amazing microphones with the same material over and over again, and, and that's as good as it gets at the minute. Uh, I've been using speech recognition software for nearly 20 years. It's a lot better now than it was yeah. when I started. Uh, mm. it, it's, it's not perfect. Um, and I, I, th I think that it, I'm hopeful in that, mm. that I think mm. that, 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 that if we're going to, to use technology to solve a problem of scale, then we need to engage with the technology. But Definitely. but there's also but there's also you know and, and we've we've seen with you you were we, we were there with the uh, business disability forum for the uh, caption off <laughs> that we had. Yes. Uh, uh, and and, and the thing. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And you did win. Um, what 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 interested me. Was or, or what amused me most was what they'd used as training data because all of the um, automatic captioning tools seem to be sex obsessed. Yes, they it do was seem like to come up rude teenage every boys. Time. Yeah, it was, and it was quite embarrassing in that meeting because there was some rude things came up on the screen about two people in the room. So yeah, it wasn't a it wasn't a good day for them. It wasn't a good day for automatic captioning, I must say. But I think what was interesting is, um, to me, that just really showed the limit, um, and it, and then the lack of consistency, and that's the problem with um, voice recognition: is the lack of consistency. In order for it to be good and useful, there needs to be a quiet room. There needs to be nobody mumbling. There needs to be a microphone. There needs to be amazing Wi-Fi. There needs to be no one with an accent, no one with a speech impediment. And everybody has to talk one at a time, slowly and clearly. That's an awful lot of things in order to make it. And I'm talking about, I'm not talking about it being useful to anyone. I'm talking for, about it being useful as communication support for a deaf and hard of hearing person. In, a, in an important meeting, that is their job. That's my concern. It's being kind of oversold at the moment, I think. It's being box ticked, voice recognition's done. And it's a very long way to go before it can become really true communication support for deaf and hard of hearing people. And it is my concern because um, access to work is a fabulous thing. It pays for us to support people in their work. But, you know, if, if they're being told that voice recognition is there, you know, that will take us out of the um, equation. And I, I think that would be a terrible thing at this time for deaf and hard of hearing people in the workplace. I think it would be going way, way backwards backwards 20, 30 years, all we fought for would be gone. Yeah. Ah, uh, I just found the picture from that day. We've also got <laughs> Matty had sex in terms of he found what he yeah, got um, a screen yeah. during his birth certificate. Good morning. Well, that's coherent. Yeah, it wasn't great, was it? It wasn't great. <laughs> but there, there was, I did see potential in it. And for me, I'd love to be involved in the conversation. I mean, and I have, I have put myself like I would say, we are experts in this field. You know, we're experts in terms of what people want. We also know what you need, what it needs to look like. Where we also need where it needs to go, how that needs to look. And um, I think there's some fantastic um, things within the voice recognition software that are being developed by many big companies. And I have reached out on a number of occasions, saying, could we also connect into the back end of these things? So. You, someone might want to use your voice recognition software in a meeting because it's someone, it's an informal meeting, it's a friend, they can stop, they can try again. But it would be fantastic if we could use our equipment to also take advantage of these things. But I haven't been taken up on that, but you never know, they might be watching. <laughs> uh, well, we were, we, you know, we were talking with our, we were talking with our people this week in Madrid mm -hmm. about the API for the back end to allow for both 
and and so I think it it will happen. I think there's there's times where you can you can look at uh, automatic speech recognition and then have it moderated by people with skills. Yeah. So I think that 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 the next step, if you like, is actually you know maybe you have people with your your skill set you know acting as the triage and the the quality control for for some of this stuff because I I think that. You know, it's it, it's clearly not quite there yet. But at the same time, if if we're to have ubiquitous captions like, like with uh, what Android is ha is mm -hmm. delivering now, and I'm going to shut up in a minute, Deborah. I know you've got a question. Um, then there needs to be, um, yeah, because we want we want it to scale, right? We want access to be ubiquitous, mm -hmm. and we want it to be everywhere. Um, we needed to work together, though, and I think yeah, um, my, my my real issue at the minute is being oversold. It's not as accurate as people mm -hmm, are saying. Mm -hmm. it is. True. It's not as accurate as the companies who are selling it at. You know, I hear the word, I hear the numbers, eighty percent being bandied around. It's not eighty percent accurate. It just isn't. And it's interesting. We had a client come to us who was told to use one of these automatic softwares on a webinar, and it was interesting how they came down from eighty percent, and when they'd actually used it, they said fifty. And they, when they, I heard them speak about it again, they said it's only 50 to 60% accurate. And no one wants to work with half of something wrong. It's just not professional, it's not useful. You know, you wouldn't give a braille document to someone who is visually impaired and say, there you go, but there's 50% missing, now can you go and do your job? You just wouldn't. But can we Deborah. stop talking about automatic captioning and talk about how wonderful humans still are? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, we come on. We, we, you know, it's the elephant in the room. But at the same time, so we've we've we covered the elephant because you know, we, have. we we live we live in <laughs> uh, in the world of technology. Deborah, you, we do. You had a question. Well, and I, I think it's an important conversation, the, what, you're, what we're talking about, because people are, it seems like people are in different camps. They're like, like totally yeah. ignoring it. Why do we need captions? It's such a small percentage of people that need it. Why bother? <clears throat> when the reality is we all benefit from captions. Um, 100%. Who cares if it's 80% or 96% or whatever accurate? It's better than well, nothing. If there is... <laughs> Yeah, if if there's say you know a tornado warning in Maryland, which this happened, and the captioning yeah. is bad or not in existence, and yes. um, it matches well, that. I'm so it? sorry, right? Yeah. So you know, tornado, take cover. Mm, sorry, you missed that. You know, because the captioning yeah. is wrong. So uh, there's so much resistance to captioning, and yet so many people use captioning all over the world. And I know that we worked with, uh, I'm such a fan of my clear text. And first of all, thank you, thank you, thank you for supporting Access Chat for years. We love you and Elaine and <laughs> Pleasure. we, we are it. just so thrilled. I mean, it's, it, you're always giving back and I applaud that. And, but I know that, that we were trying to work with you with Facebook. I, I have another show, mm -hmm. Human Potential at Work, and we were trying to do a caption and live and, and then the captions would go away and there were, so many technological problems with yeah. the platforms to even get the accessibility to work. I mean, the captioning to work, it was a mind boggling. And then there was recently um, an investment made in a captioning company here in the United States. And I had a few investors call and talk to me about it. And they were saying, well, what difference does it make if it's accurate, you know, to, once again, we're getting high numbers, right? Um, but the reality is uh, the 50% number, uh, that's pretty significant. So I, I, there seems to be so many, so much confusion with captioning. It's too expensive. It's too hard. Nobody yeah. uses it. And it's all ridiculous. And I'm always saying when I'll see something about videos, I will say, remember, according to Facebook, 80 to 85% mm -hmm. of videos are watched with the sound off. Yes. So if you don't have it captioned... I hope but that's what I say to people. In a way we can figure it out. Well, we we work with companies. I think that's probably what's different about us as a company. We're not just you don't just come to us. I need this subtitle. We send someone. It's over. We try and really understand what it is you want. What's your audience? What are you trying to do? You're trying to do this as a one-off. If you are, we'll always try and make you think wider. Um, most people like I'll oh, put it on a tablet, put it there, and I'm like, well, how about having it on the screen? I give them the figures. Yeah, one in one in ten people has a hearing loss. Twenty-five percent of the, our country doesn't have English as a first language. 
you know, we're getting into millions of people now. Um, we, we try so much to advocate all the time. But the other thing we try and do is make it simple. So I spend a lot of time, Elaine and I spend a lot of time. Facebook, you can't go direct to Facebook. You have to go through another platform. You know, platforms like Zoom are amazing. They have a captioning um, input. It's really great, but the captions don't record. So we have found a way around that. You know, we just spend our lives battling with technology to get captions out there. I mean, one of my favorite things is we went, we were asked to go and do a large plenary for a very large corporate company. And um, they were like trying accessibility, as I always think. And there were 1,700 people from all over the world at this conference. And I was chatting to one of the women after I did the subtitles and it went down really well. They were really pleased. And the organizer came to me, she said, we've been having such a problem with engagement at this event because everyone's looking at their phones, they're sending messages, the social media is going. She says, that is the first time everybody listened to the plenary. And they didn't listen to the plenary, they read the captions, but they're, and then when we got into some of the sessions, the English level was very low, actually. It was much lower than I think they thought it was going to be. And having those captions there. So if you're a global company, you should be captioning anything that has everybody everybody from your company there. Barclays uses for their um, global town halls. For that reason alone, Barclays are incredibly accessible, obviously. They use us for a lot of their other stuff. We, we do. And I, and I use Barclays as an example in order to leverage other companies to have capital. I'm, I will say anything to make you caption your stuff. Not because I want the business, but just because you really, really should be doing it. And, you know, I think that's where, because I do the job and I run the company, I always go to the first job with the first time someone uses us. And I get in there and I figure out who's who and who can I talk to and who can I convince. You know, I did a course for someone this week, first time we'd worked with them. Lots and lots and lots of videos and not one had captions on them. And they had a deaf person in the room. You know, I was able to go straight to them and go, this isn't great. I also had a contact of the company. I was able to get to him and say, right, this is going wrong in your company. So I think we're quite good as a red flag for people about this stuff and say, you know, you're not doing this. You need to be doing this. And then you can always bring in Barclays are doing it. <laughs> Nothing gets on there. Right. Nothing gets past Barclays without captions. That's the rules. You can't do that. And they sponsor us as well for doing captioning for other things. They're, they're really great. I think they really are the benchmark for other big, large companies. And um, I agree. Yeah. once I say, I will be talking and I can see them glaze over. But once I say Barclays do this, then they're like, do they? Oh, that's really interesting. So, you know, you have to use everything you can. <laughs> I agree. And Barclays also supports access chat. So we are big, big, big fans of Barclays. They they are really walking the walk across the board. But I think, you know, there's it seems like people are thinking about this topic from a negative instead of a positive, because there are so many positive reasons why people should do captioning and you know it helps the, with seos it's like you you now have this information archived you can use it for different things there's so many benefits to captioning and yet we're still having this stupid ridiculous argument about whether or not we should have captioning and whether it should be you know legible caption yeah so i was just wondering I mean, if you could address that I, I do think you know voice recognition plays a part in this and i do think people use it and then go this isn't good enough i mean when they see it done well i think it's interesting if you ask people about um live subtitles i know deaf people who turn off the subtitles because they're not good they're not helpful and if you don't have good captioning people would rather rely on the um their other skills that they use to do this um, and I think you have to have good captioning. And what we do, and I think it it's works really well for us, is we make it really easy for people. So um, I did, we, British Science Festival wanted to become more accessible. So we talked to them and I went down there yesterday and I did a couple of events. And I said, so how was it? They said, you made that so easy. Now we can see how easy that is. Next year, we're going to do this. And I just thought, I said to Elaine, that's why we do what we do, because now next year, the British Science Festival will have more captioned events. And I think it's, as a company, we, we always want to go in um, at a really high level and show them the best it can be and how easy it can be and how good it can be. And then they, they'll want more. You know, I think when people have had a bad experience of captioning, they just back off and that's it. And that's, and, and that's my worry about 
voice recognition is that people are over promoting it and then using it and then turning it off. And if that's all a deaf person has in the room and someone goes, I'm finding this distracting, can we turn this off? And they don't have the courage to go, hang on a minute, I'm using it. And lots of people don't in work. Lots of people don't speak at meetings because they don't have confidence. It's that kind of thing that's a worry. But yeah, I don't I understand. And in the United Go on. I don't understand. Sorry, in the United there. States. Yeah. Sorry, sorry, I think there's a delay. But in yeah. the United States, you know, we don't, we're not allowed to ask if a person has a disability. So many no. people have hearing loss or are hard of hearing or deaf. You know, a lot of times a person that's deaf, they're going to know it. But there are people in the room that need it. But they don't want to come out and tell you they need it for a lot of different reasons. And so uh, one thing that I really liked about working with my clear text was that you were so willing to help me figure it out. And it was, to oh, yeah. me, it was a very complicated problem that in the end, we gave up to being live on Facebook because it was so hard. I know. I, and I hated that we had to do that, but we did because yeah. we would do the captions and then they would lose it. It was so... It, yeah. it, and so we do it, we do the captions, but we do them after the fact. And so we don't do it live anymore because it was it was just too difficult. But I really like that y'all were so flexible and willing to work. And you see a place for technology, but there's, there's got to be a balance. And you must have the quality. You must have the quality. But I think the quality is really important. And, and I also think, you know, I do think that's what makes us unique, particularly in the UK, is I love when someone comes to me and says, how do we do this? And, um, you know, we've really worked hard to understand the equipment that's used all over. And then if it's something new, we'll go find out about it and then we'll make it, our stuff work with it. And, and I'm really, we're doing a 24 hour um, conference and I had a meeting about it this morning. And it was great because I, I like to offer a number of different solutions to different you know, you can have this, but the compromise is this, or we can do this, but the compromise is this. And that gives people a choice and power over what they want. And then they choose that and then we'll be able to do it. And again, like I said, I just like to make it easy for people because if you put a barrier in the way, you know, you're fantastic. You don't go live, you put the captions on and then you go out. Most people just go, let's lose the captions. And that's what I'm always trying to prevent. If, if, if it seems too complicated, people just get a bit now nah, let's just leave it we'll do it next time and they never do so we always try to get in there and go yeah of course we can do that leave it with us we'll come back to you with some options but i enjoy technology and i love it and um you know i recommend voice recognition as well someone asked us they had um someone who was working for them and they had these huddles and they were very last minute and they would happen at any time and i said get yourself a voice recognition app pass it round I would, there's no point in us doing that. We couldn't cover that. We couldn't be available like that. So it's really important that, you know, it's used in the right ways. Um, a guy down in um, Derby is using it for theatre. There's a couple of little ad libs. So he's mic'd up one of the actors and he's put the voice recognition in place. So they wouldn't have to pay for someone like us to come down for like five minutes in a theatre show, which is a fantastic use of it. But, you know, we, yeah. you're better off using us for the big stuff. Absolutely, it's it's the the broad reach, large events where you know it it, it makes re real sense to to make the the investment in in quality captions. I, yeah. I I think that one of the one of the things we'd like to see, and we were we were at an event this week where we were you know people were posting videos up, and what I'd like to see is it become much more easy to make social media more accessible because social yeah. media even even tw so t as twitter has become a much more rich medium as social media has become much more picture driven much more video driven it's actually become less accessible yeah so we're creating more and more media that's actually exclusive to, um and 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 yeah at the same time it's quite hard to to, to do all of the stuff and, and stay in the moment because sometimes when you're at an event like, like Antonio and I were at, you, you wanted to post something timely, right? Mm -hmm. um, you, know, you, you capture a quick comment. Now, something like clips is quite good for, for doing that and you can, you can post edit, um, mm -hmm. which, is, which is great. Um, but at the same time, um, you know, you're still having to go through a whole flow of things. And, and so, you know, love to get it better. 
I mean, I think it's. I think, it, it, I think so. Yes. I yeah. mean, I mean, I think people like stage checks to have do little courses for people and give information about how to subtitle your own videos. You can do yeah. that, but yeah. I would always say to people, if you have um, really big stuff or important stuff, get someone to do it for you because the amount of time it will take you, you might as well pay someone to knock it out and do it properly with all the right size of things. Can I mention one company that I think has really, really been amazing in terms of what we do and, and um, <laughs> do you know Thought, ThoughtWorks? So I just wanted to talk about the relationships. We like to have relationships with a company and I was working with one of their employees, Matthew Johnson. I was going along on my own, access to work were paying for me to be at his away day. And they kept talking about diversity, diversity, diversity. And then when I went to the next event, I said, you know, you keep talking about diversity, but what about disability? And they, it was amazing. They just stopped dead and went, oh, yeah, we hadn't. I said, that's diversity. And they, they just hadn't seen that. And um, But they totally took it on board and went for it. And last year we did an away day for them. We had seven breakout sessions, all with remote captions, all recorded for around the world youth. And they recently, there was an award ceremony and um, we were asked to do it by them. And they wanted to put the captions on the side. ThoughtWorks said, no way. We like captions on the main screen. That's what's accessible. And, you know, that to me is success when we've worked with a company and now they're going out and influencing and they're going out and telling people what they should be doing in terms of captioning. Then we can go on and work with someone else and spread it some way that way. But I really wanted to mention them. They were, they were just, to me, they've been a dream to work with. And it's been a really great journey, a real success. So, yeah. And, and I know that you mentioned stage text, but can you just explain a little bit more about how you're making, working with them to make theatre more accessible? Well, stage text are a charity, and they've been around for a, a very long time. But um, they're a charity, so they run like a charity. They're funded by the um, Arts Council. So I had a relationship with them as a freelancer, but as my clear text has been growing, I could do less and less, really. And I was looking at how they were working, and I really thought, you know what, they could do with a bit of technology injection. You know, I was getting more and more skilled, and they weren't getting that. So I could see that we could come together and work together. So we met last year, and we sat down, and we, we just had a delivery partnership. So... We bring our kind of expertise, they bring their clients, and then we deliver the work for them. So it, it just is bringing that kind of cutting edge thing to Arts Council funded events. So um, yeah, it's been really exciting. We've done some great stuff. We work a lot with South Bank. We do all sorts of events with them and we kind of bring our expertise into that. And then they can they can move on and look for new clients and making um, arts and culture more accessible, okay. which so is their duty. When you're delivering captions to uh, to a live stage event, where are the captions? Are they on a side screen or are they? They can doing... be a caption yeah. box. Yeah, that's still the way it's done in theatre yeah. at the moment is a caption box. But I'd like to see that change. There's lots of new things called creative captioning. Um, there's lots of new things. You've got the caption glasses from the National Theatre as well, which is uh, which means you could go to any performance. Interestingly, there's loads of different kinds of feedback. Not everyone loves them, but it's a fantastic thing to be able to pick your performance, pop some glasses on, and away you go. I mean, you, that has to be a great thing. They recently won an award at Tech for Good Awards. So, yeah, really great, um, great developments there. And you can send live captions to those glasses as well, which is great. We send captions to devices as well. So if people don't want it on the screens, you, we send things to tablets. We can, you know, we do um, some of the political conference subtitling and we send it, to, we put it on a link and people can read it on their phones. Excellent. So, you know, you can do anything. It's it's really creative area. It really is. And um, you can put captions anywhere. We can find a way to suit you. Excellent. So we've reached the end of our half an hour, and I'm, I'm amazed. Antonio sat there in the background. He's actually at the airport, um, <laughs> so on on mute. Um, but uh, we need to obviously thank all of the people that keep us going, which is yourselves, Parkplace Access, and, and Microlink. Uh, it's it's been a real pleasure, Orla, as always, um, and we really look forward to having a lively chat on Twitter yes. in a Looking few days' time. To Thanks for having me. <laughs> Our pleasure. You were wonderful. Oh, I was quite nervous, though. I'm not normally nervous when I talk about.